everyone. Um, I realized I forgot to start us out in prayer, um, so we'll start out with a little prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Dear God, just come into our hearts, open our minds and our ears, remind us that you love us the most, show us your love, open our hearts to your love. In your name we pray, amen. amen. All right, as I said earlier, my name is Madeline Slater. Um, I'm your youth coordinator, and I'm also your speaker for tonight. Um, I'm a junior, pre-med, studying biology and Spanish. And when I'm not studying, I like to play soccer with my friends. I like to sing and dance. It doesn't really matter the time, place, or region. Um, and I love being Catholic. And I also love exploring my faith and in my relationship with Jesus Christ, which is why I love being involved in the Newman Center so much. It's a great place for me. And when I'm not here, I'm also really involved in this organization called Boca Brigades. And if you heard me give a talk before, it's probably seeped in there somehow, because I really do love it a lot. Um, and you're gonna hear about it a little more tonight, again. So this series um, is about love. If this is your first night here, or if you've been here the past couple of weeks, and you just need a little refresher, it's called Love Changes Everything. And we've been using this prayer by Pedro Adafé um, to kind of guide us through this journey of exploring how <coughs> God's love changes everything. And I'm going to read it for you, if you don't mind, one more time. Nothing is more practical than finding God, than falling in love in a quite absolute final way. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination, will affect everything. It will decide what you, will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, whom you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. As Caitlin talked about last week, we need to fall in love with God. We need to fall in love with him in an absolute final way. Because once we've fallen in love with God, everything changes. And we start to dedicate our lives to Christ. Suddenly we put God at the center of everything. And he seeps into every corner, nook, and cranny into our lives, whether we like it or not. And it's so beautiful. This is what we should want, and this is what we should be striving for. And then, as Kayla talked about, he's suddenly at the center of everything that we love, or he points us to doing things that we love. The first week of the series, Kayla talked about three things that she's really passionate about and how God is at the center of each one of those passions. She's passionate about Mizzou and how she's put God at the center of her faith journey here at Mizzou. She also leaned on Christ to guide her as she led teens in a Christian camp called Cove Christ one summer. She even finds him as she pursues her graduate degree in math, and she prepares to mentor and teach high schoolers one day. She talked about how suddenly her love for Christ had decided when she gets up in the morning, how she spends her days, how she spends her evenings, and it decides how she spends her weekends. But love will also decide what breaks your heart. And this is the part of the prayer I will be focusing on this evening. Because there are things in the world, <coughs> things on this campus, things in our lives, things in our hearts, that we are passionate about. Things that we love can break our hearts as well. So what is a broken heart in the context of this talk? As I was praying in adoration last week, trying to figure out how I was going to explain this, I, um, this phrase came into my mind. It's, it said, 
A broken heart is a tender heart. So now what does a tender heart mean? Well, when you stub your toe or you bruise your arm or something, one of the words that we use to describe it is like, oh, yeah, it hurts. It's a little tender. And actually the dictionary says the word tender means soft and delicate to touch, not hard or rough. Like it actually says not hard or rough in the definition. So our broken hearts are soft and tender to touch, but they're not hard and they're not rough. And it may hurt, but it allows us to be empathetic to people. It allows us to understand their pain and feel their pain as well. So when we look at the world, we should look at the world through God's eyes. There's a song by Hillsong called um, Hosanna, and it, at one point it says, break my heart for what breaks yours, God. We should look at the world and see what breaks God's heart should also break our hearts as well. Mother Teresa says, I have found the paradox that if I love until it hurts, then there is no hurt but more love. So this is our broken heart for the world, and I'm sure we all have things that upset us, that we are so deeply in love with and passionate about that it hurts us when we see it broken. Some things that could break our hearts. Um, actually, my friend Caitlin is here tonight. Her name is Caitlin Cinnamon. She's a fellow Iowa girl. Um, she didn't go to my high school, but we, um, we met playing soccer together. And I met her in fifth grade, and as our friendship developed, um, I saw, got to see her develop as a person too. And throughout high school, I saw that this cause was breaking her heart. Um, children with cancer broke her heart. Having, seeing these kids that had to spend all their lives in their hospital or their childhood in their hospital really broke her heart, and she was really passionate about that issue, and that's something that I always admired about her. Some of you might be involved in Dan's Marathon. She is as well. That issue might be something that breaks your heart. Violence against women is another one. It happens all around the world, but it also happens here on this campus. The clarity reports that we see can break our hearts. Even just the lies about love on campus, people who are abused emotionally as well, people who don't <laughs> take love and relationships seri seriously and love and abuse people, discrimination, race, gender, religion, it happens here on this campus. What breaks my heart <coughs> is health disparities in the world. I went on a trip with Global Brigades my freshman year. Um, it was a medical trip. And we assisted with a rural clinic in a community. And um, patient after patient came in with the same things. And they would say, me duele mi estomaco, which means my stomach hurts. Over and over again, people with waterborne illnesses, parasites, or whatever would come in, and that broke my heart. The fact that our doctors were describing Tylenol over and over again broke my heart, because I realized that almost all of us probably have Tylenol or some sort of that in our medicine cabinets at home or in our purses, <coughs> and this is something that the doctors were describing, and it broke my heart. And all these things and issues can be very overwhelming. There's this book that I've read called Kisses from Katie. And she is a girl, a woman now, who graduated from high school and decided to go to Uganda and serve abroad for a year. Well, she's ended up, she's been there for several years now and she's hasn't come back. She left her family, she left 
opportunities to go to college. She had many people that loved her. She loved her life here, but she felt the calling to go elsewhere. And this is a little excerpt from her book. Sometimes working in a third world country makes me feel like I'm emptying the ocean with an eyedropper. And just when I have about a cup full of water, it rains. More orphan children from the north migrate to where I live. More abandoned and dead babies are found. More people are infected with HIV. It is enough to discourage even the most enthusiastic person. And yet the discouragement lasts only a moment, and God tells me to keep going. That he loves me. That he loves these people. That he will never leave or forsake any of us. Not one. That my work is important to him. Just like Katie and her metaphor with the dropper in the ocean, like these issues can very much overwhelm us. We may have, we may have thoughts that say, well, there's, we're never going to find a cure that will eliminate all the types of cancers in the world. We can never stop receiving those MU Clary reports. That'll just keep happening. This, there will always be disparity in the world. So what's the point? But this talk isn't about just these broken ideas. It's about how do we respond to our broken hearts? And how we can respond to this feeling of being overwhelmed and broken. I thought of three words. Pray, love, act. And actually, I was kind of telling people my ideas for this talk, and I accidentally said, eat, pray, love one time. Um, which could be true. Sometimes you have a broken heart. If you have a bad day, all you want is a tub of ice cream. That's me. I love ice cream. But um, that's not what I mean. Pray, love, act. So the first one is prayer. There's a verse in Ephesians 3. Um, and I actually forgot to bring my Bible up here, but it says something that I'll have Ryan bring it up to me and I'll move on. <laughs> my first is that day. <laughs> it talks about how God can do more than we can imagine. <laughs> Good thing I was taught a song in high school with all the different books of the Bible so I can find things in the New Testament. <laughs> After you breathe. Now to him who is able to accomplish far more than all we can ask or imagine by the power at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever, amen. Now to him who is able to accomplish far more than all we can ask or imagine. We can't be afraid to pray for the big things. It might be easy to say, well, God is pretty busy. This is too much to ask. I'm not going to pray for things like world peace and solving those issues because that's just never going to happen. But the problem with that is that's placing a limit on God. And guess what? God is bigger than you and me in this campus, in this country, in this world. God created the world. We shouldn't be afraid to pray for the bigger things in life. You see discrimination on campus? Pray about it. And pray for not just the abuse, but pray for the abuser as well. We can't be afraid to ask God for his help. Because although we can't do it alone, he can do all things. And we have to be prepared to receive how he answers our prayers. Because he may not answer in the exact way you ask, but the important thing is remembering that he will answer it in some way. The next thing is love. 
There is a part during the Passion when Jesus is carrying the cross and he meets his mother. And Mary sees him broken and suffering, and she's broken and suffering as well. She feels his pain, and she just looks at him with love. She doesn't harden her heart. Her heart stays tender. She doesn't close herself off from the world and say, I give up. She doesn't start hating the people who are abusing him. She just loves. And that should be our response as well. Mother Teresa says, and this is, I'm going to repeat the quote I said earlier, I have found the paradox that if I love until it hurts, then there is no hurt but more love. And this love can also influence our actions, so that goes into the third part, act. Because in reality, I'm sure you've all heard this before, love is an action. It's not a noun. Love is an action. Another quote from Mother Teresa says, we cannot do great things. We can only do little things with great love. There's a, there's a story about a boy and a starfish. There are thousands of starfish washed on the shore on this beach and he goes up and he starts throwing them back in <coughs> eventually a man comes up to him and says what are you doing and he said i'm throwing the starfish back in the water he said why well they'll die if they stay up here they'll dry out and they'll die he said but you can't save all these starfish look at them there's thousands you can't even save 10 percent of the starfish so what's the point what you're doing is not worth it. In response, the boy picks up the starfish, throws it back into the ocean and says, my actions matter to that starfish. Our actions, I talked about how these issues are overwhelming. Let God do the big things and let's do the little things. We can love one more person each day we can extend our love to that friend who's been emotionally abused in our relationship. We can build just a tiny part of a water system in Honduras. Jesus Christ did little things as well. He had a big impact, but every day he was inviting tax collectors to eat with him at dinner healing the poor man, just touching a leper. Those are all small things that had a great big impact. I talked about my friend Caitlin earlier. She was 16 or 17 when she started raising money for children with cancer. She was making tie blankets all the time. She was setting up little fundraisers. And as a high schooler, she had raised a lot of money for this cause. In my own way, I've responded as well. I found that although these things overwhelm me, just talking to one more person, making a connection with the person when I've been abroad, <coughs> letting them know that I love them by my little actions has made a great impact. It was overwhelming when I was in the Dominican this past summer studying abroad, and we were um, learning about the World Health Organization. And we had, like we were looking at, in 2002, they set a plan to reduce child mortality by a certain percent, I think it was 25% by 2015. And we read all their plans, and it sounded really awesome. They're like, oh my gosh, this is great. They're not going in to just like change or fix these countries. They're gonna build relationships with their governments. It's sustainable, like these are great ideas to help reduce the death of children under five years old. And then we realized, hey, it's 2015. Like, how are we doing? Well, we looked up the statistics and we haven't even come close to reaching that goal. 
but we've made progress. And that was overwhelming to me, but it solidified the fact that I do want to be a physician. And if every day I can just help one person with their pain, help one person with their health problems, like that is enough. And Global Brigades does things like, it may just be a small, like my water brigade had six students from Mizzou. And it was a 14 kilometer system that we were building. We maybe finished 500 meters of that system. But we started it in January and other schools came throughout the spring semester and that system was finished in July. Serving over 500 fam over 500 peoples and 100 families, three communities, one week and this system was finished. Katie from the book goes on to say, love is the reason I just keep filling up my little eyedropper. Keep filling it up and emptying my ocean one drop at a time. I'm not here to eliminate poverty, to eradicate disease, to put a stop to people abandoning babies. I'm just here to love. So I challenge you to identify those issues that break your heart and to respond with prayer, love, and action. Thank you.